Hello everyone, welcome to the first lecture session of design of steel structure. Uh, myself Abhay Kumar, today we will cover the introduction part for the steel design of steel structure. The introduction will be covered in the following under following points. First is the common steel structure, second is the member of steel structures, we will discuss uh, what are the basic members uh, that are used in uh, steel structures. Then we will briefly look at the uh, syllabus by the university and we will discuss that what are the course objectives or what would be the learnings after we complete this course. In the second, in the further part, we will look at the IS codes which are recommended or which we must follow during this course. And in the last section of this session, we will look at the some of the books which are uh, very helpful, which would be very helpful during this course. So, let us look at the sum of the very common steel structure. As we know that steel is a very common building material, we can look various kind of steel structure around us. For example, there are so many bridges which are built of steel as well as there are so many skyscrapers buildings built of uh, steel as well as fluid retaining tanks, uh, various kinds of fluid uh, to store various kind of fluids, uh, different steel tanks are built as well as uh, we see that uh, for the transmission of electricity uh, various <coughs> towers are built for this. Also uh, in the industrial facilities to, con uh, to construct the various industrial facilities uh, the steel is used at a very large scale, uh, pipelines projects are uh, constructed uh, of steel. Uh, various stadiums, cricket stadium, football stadiums and so many other structures also constructed from steel. Okay. So, let us look at some of the example. This is the Havda bridge of uh, Kolkata, this is a very famous uh, Havda bridge from Calcutta. So, this is made of a steel, it is a very large span of uh, bridge. Again, this is the Willis Tower from USA, uh, it is also a uh, steel building. This is the uh, water storage tank made up of steel. This is the uh, tower used for the transmission in PGCIL, it is uh, from the, this picture is taken from the one of the distribution facility from the PGCIL. This is the uh, image of the some industrial facility. We can see in this picture that there are so many uh, steel members are used for its construction. Also pipelines are there and this is the under construction image of Ikana Stadium, famous Ikana Stadium in Lucknow. We can see uh, how the steel is used for overlay the roof of its of the stadium. Okay. Now, let us look at the members of the steel structure. Okay. So, as our uh, the name of our course is the design of steel structure. So, build to build an any steel structure, we must know uh, the designing of the components, of its components. So, if we <coughs> look at the components, component part, so we may find that there are few common uh, components which we will find in every steel structure. These can be beams, columns, floors, bracing system, foundation and connections. What are beams? Beams are those members which are 
subjected to flexure loading. Okay. Columns are those members which are subjected to compression loading. We can see in this figure that there is a column has been mentioned. We can see in this figure. Now, the beam is highlighted over here beam is subjected to the flexure loading, it will bend as the uh, loading will be applied in the transverse direction. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> the bracing systems, bracing systems are uh, provided to support the horizontal loads which are being applied or which come on the steel structure. Okay. These bracing member may be subjected to tension or may be subjected to compression depending upon the direction of the applied loading. Okay. Also, there are floors in this uh, <coughs> steel structure okay. and one of, one of the most important part of any steel structure is the foundation, foundation part of the structure. Okay. We can see uh, <coughs> and since beams and columns need to be joined, uh, so we must study about the connection part also. Okay. We must know how these are connected, there are various ways to connect any two steel members, so we will <coughs> discuss that. Okay. So, by looking all these thing, we can understand one thing that to construct any structure, if we go through the designing part of the beams or the flexor members, columns or the compression member, bracing system, tension and compression both, okay, connections. Okay. So, by going through this or by having the elementary knowledge of the design principles of these components, we can go for the designing of the steel structure. So, keeping this thing in mind, our slabus is designed accordingly. <coughs> so, the entire slabus of uh, our university has been uh, is divided uh, into uh, six modules. I have divided this uh, slabus under six modules to facilitate the understanding. Okay. Okay. So, let us look what we have to study in the first module. In the first module, in the very first module, we will look at the general considerations, okay. we will look at the basic, in the first unit we will try to understand the material, steel as a material. Okay. First, we will uh, look at the intro introduction, then what are the advantages and disadvantages, <coughs> advantages and disadvantages of the steel as a construction material. Okay. Then we will look at what is structural steel, we will try to understand how structural steel uh, is differ from other steel. Then we will look at the behavior of the uh, steel when it is subjected to tensile loading mainly under the stress strain curve for the mild steel. Then we will look at the rolled steel section, what are the different steel sections that are being produced in the industry tree or which are being used for the construction of the steel structures. Then we will look at the conventions for the member axis which are uh, used for uh, general <coughs> manner. Okay. Then we will look at the loads which are the different kind of loads which are being uh, which come on the st structure during its intended life uh, like dead loads, what are the dead loads, live loads. Uh, we will also look at some of the environmental loads like seismic uh, load, uh, snow, snow load, rain load. Uh, also, we will look at the erection load. What is erection load? Hmm. After looking all these kind of loading, we will look at the what is the basis of design. Okay. In the first very in the very first part, we understand what is the material. We will try to understand what is the steel material what kind of material is available in the uh, market. Okay. 
then we will look at the design philosophies what are the different design philosophies or what are the different methods through which the steel structure is designed okay then we will look at the local buckling how local buckling occurs in an plate element then we will focus on the limit state design okay <clears throat> while discussing the design philosophy we will uh, got to know um, uh, we will got to know that there are uh, mainly three design philosophies okay first is the lsm del, uh, wsm and the uh, ultimate load method okay ultimate load method it is uh, also acronymized as usm uh, wsm stands for the working stress method lsm stands for the limit state method and usm okay <coughs> okay but these two philosophies other than limit state method are not very much used okay working stress method is absolute now uh, uh, our code is 800 is very much based on the uh, uh, limit state method only okay uh, in very very uh, less uh, structures okay if i would say that uh, very non important structure okay that are only designed for the with the wsm most of the designing we do, uh, most of the designing part is dealt with the uh, lsm only okay so so uh, during this course we will majorly design all the structures or the components with the lsm only okay so in this first unit we will also look at the introduction part of the limit state method how or what is limit state method and how it works also we will try to understand the limit state for the strength limit states of the serviceability actions what is the probabilistic basis for the design and what is the design criteria okay so through this by covering all these things we will cover our first module in the second module i will focus on the simple connection majorly riveted and bolted connection what is rivets what is bolt how they help to form the connections how different connections are made from them okay we will discuss all these things in this unit so let us focus on this riveted connection what are the different patterns of the riveted joints bolted connections similarly types of bolt what are the different type of bolt what are the different grades of bolts which are used okay types of joints bolted joints mainly how the load transfers okay when there are two members for example are connected through a bolt okay so how this force transfers force is transferring from one member to the other member by following its path through the bolt okay we will look at this in the mechanism load transfer mechanism okay failure of the bolted joints how bolted joints fail specification for the bolted joints what are the different specifications for the bolted joints bearing type of connections prying action what is prying action we will look at into this part okay then we will focus on the tensile strength of the plate how the tensile strength of the plate is measured or how we calculate the tensile strength of the plate efficiency of the joint how can we uh, specify the efficiency of any joint okay combined shear and tension when bolts are subjected to tension as well as shear also okay there are two types of loading which are coming to the bolt at the same time okay slip uh, slip critical connections combined shear and tension for the slip critical connection we will look at the slip critical connection and the combined shear and tension on the this connection okay then we will also look at some of the design rules based on working stress method or working load design we will look at that okay 
design of eccentric bolted connection okay so by looking all these different points we will complete this module now in the third module we will look at the simple welded connection most of the things which we have read in the second module all those things we will again deal but this time we will look from the perspective of the welded connection okay so first we will see the introduction what are the types of weld welds uh, what we uh, what are the different symbols we use in the welding or the welded connection okay then what is the welding process what are the defects okay how we would inspect the weld okay inspection is also necessary because if some worker is performing the welding job you as engineer have the responsibility or have the duty to inspect that weld is that proper welding is made there or not okay then what are the assumptions in the analysis of the welded joints okay then what is the how we will design the groove welds okay uh, then fillet weld this is really important point uh, okay we will very uh, we will focus on this more uh, that is design of fillet weld okay similarly fillet weld applied to the edge of a plate or section uh, fillet weld for truss members okay design of intermittent fillet welds plug and slot welds stresses due to individual forces okay combination of the stresses failure of welds distortion of the welded parts fillet welds butt welds butt weld is also really important uh, point or type of weld okay we will look at that butt weld and we will try to compare with the fillet weld okay welded joint versus bolted joints and riveted joints we will compare these type of joints also okay design of eccentric welded connection as we have seen in the second module that uh, eccentric connections for the bolted connection and here we have to see the eccentric connection for the welded connection also again working load design okay so by looking all these points we will compa uh, complete our module 3 in the module 4 we will focus on the tension member okay how tension member is designed so first we will understand what is tension member then types of tension member what are the different types of tension member net sectional area how we calculate the net sectional area how uh, this net sectional area is affecting the strength of the member okay effective net area how we will calculate the effective net area that is actually responsible for the transmission of the load okay types of failure what are the different types of failure when a member subjected for the tension design strength of the tension member hmm? cylinder nest ratio this is a really important uh, topic or concept for this entire course okay so we will focus very much on that topic displacements design of tension members what are lug angles how they are used uh, splices gusset plate working load design okay so through looking all these things we would be able to design the any tension member which is being placed in our steel structure okay in the module 5 we will focus on the compression member okay what is compression member we will look or we will look into that or we will understand about the compression member in the introduction part what is the effective length of the any compression member what should be the cylinderness ratio of the compression member okay what are the different type of section types of buckling this is really important classification of cross sections how we will classify the cross section column formula design strength design of actually loaded compression member built up columns how we design the built up columns lacing batons compression members composed of two components back to back okay that is built up members splices design of column bases okay how this column is transferring load to the foundation that we will look this 
in, into this design of column basis. Okay. Now, in the second module, we will focus on the flexure member that is beam. Okay. First, we will look at the introduction, then type of section, behavior of beams in the flexure, section classification, lateral stability of the beams. Lateral stability is very important uh, concept to understand how uh, our beam is susceptible to lateral movement when the compression is coming in the upper half or in the other half portion of the beam. That lateral torsional buckling, this is really important, it is the uh, further part of the lateral stability. Then bending strength of the beam, laterally supported beams, laterally unsupported beams, okay. shear strength of the beam, we will try to con uh, calculate the shear strength of the beams. We will understand the concept of web, uh, web buckling also, we will look at that how we can avoid the web buckling also bearing strength, what is web crippling similarly we will try to understand how we can avoid the web crippling similarly deflection beam to cover its serviceability how much deflection is recommended or how we can control or limit the deflection that is coming on the beam similarly design procedure of the rolled beams built up beams plated beams that is built up beams is the plated beam. We will look at uh, in our second lecture that how built up beams or what is built up section mainly. Okay. Then pearl lines, beam bearing plates, effect of holes in the beam, introduction of plate girder and introduction to gantry girder. Our syllabus limits us up to just the introduction of the plate girder and the gantry girder. Okay. So, through this we will complete our entire slavers in these modules. Now, let us look at the course objective or by the end of this course or by the end of this course, what student would be able to perform? Student would be able to understand the properties of steel and type of loads acting on a steel structure by the end of the first unit. By the end of the second unit, uh, unit student would be able to design the welded bolted type of connection for the elementary steel structures. By the end of the third unit, student would be able to design the tension members for elementary steel structures. By the end of the fourth unit, student would be able to design the compression uh, members such as simple columns, braced and latticed columns and column base also. By the end of the fifth unit, student would be able to design the flexure members such as beams, purlins and girders. Okay. So, these are some uh, really important IS codes which we would follow during this course. First is the IS 800-2007. This is based on the limited state design. Okay, general construction using hot rolled steel section joint uh, using rivets, bolting, and welding. Okay, IS 808. This is used for the uh, hot rolled steel beams, columns, channels, angles, sections. Uh, basic dimensions. Okay, nominal dimensions are mentioned here. Handbook for the civil engineers. That is SP6, Special Publication 6, uh, uh, 1964 is used for the dimension and properties of the common steel structures and IS 875 from part 1 to part 5 used for the uh, to look at the different loads which are coming on the structure that is dead load, imposed load, a wind load, a snow, a special kind of loads. Okay. So, out of these uh, codes IS 800 and SP6 also called as steel table is recommended for the student to must carry. Okay. Whenever you study this course, you must have these two national codes with you. Okay. 
now these are the some of the book recommended out of these books what books i am following uh, to teach this particular session this is first one the subramanyam design of steel structure then bhavikati design of steel structure by ss bhavikati and another one is the limit state of design of steel structure by s k dukkal okay so these are the books which i recommend okay thank you everyone